Gamora, the giant fire-breathing flying turtle. While this sounds absurd, and it is, the series has been acclaimed for some of its entries, some being the greatest of the entire giant monster or kaiju genre, while others... Yeah. Anyways, the movie we are discussing today is the Gamera the Brave. Released in 2006, directed by Ryuta Tasaki, star and stars Ryu Tomioka and Kanji Suda as father and son, Kosuke, Kosuke and Toru Aizawa. This film is one of the, my favorites of the entire kaiju genre, filled with heartfelt moments, fun visual effects, and spectacular monster action. A brief history of the Gamera series. Created in 1965 by the Daiyu Film Company, Gamera was designed to be direct competition to Toho's Godzilla series. Daiyu decided to market Gamera more towards kids, calling him the friend of all children, and featuring more childish moments. Stop playing those! Anyway, the Gamera series is also infamous for its surprising amount of violence. Yeah, that's a little weird. Anyways, Gamera went out with a whimper in 1980 in the film Gamera Super Monster when he died by flying into a Star Destroyer. I wish I was kidding. Gamera had a second chance at life when Daiyu decided to reboot him in 1995's Gamera Guardian of the Universe, a praised film by fans and critics, and led to two equally praised sequels, ending in 1999. Gamera fell into obscurity afterwards until 2006, when Katakawa, who had bought Daiyu at this point, decided to reboot Gamera with Gamera the Brave. The film starts with a kid witnessing Gamera in 1973, sacrificing himself to, to save a village of people from his most famous enemy, the Gauss. Well, that was a short review. Bye. Oh, fine, let's continue. The movie jumps 30 years into the future to the son of the kid from the beginning visiting the grave of his mother. The kid of the kid's name is Toru. Toru and his father are trying to move on from the death of Toru's mother, when one day, Toru finds something interesting. He discovers an egg on top of a strange stone. The egg hatches as a turtle with strange markings on its bottom. Toru decides to name the turtle Toto. Toto grows larger by the next day, and Toru and his neighbor Mai see Toto fly. And he even breathes fire, but Toro does not see this just yet. Mai tells Toru that Toto might be a Gamera. Toro keeps denying this. だってこんなにちっちゃいんだよ。火だって吐かないし。だからこれから大きくなるんだよ。Toru does not accept this information as he has become attached to Toto. Toru treats Toto almost as if a pet and a way to fill the void left blank by the death of his mother. Toru and Toto's relationship is vital to the plot of this film. 
Toru's apprehension to accept the truth leads to Toru getting himself into danger and eventually helps save the day. Their relationship is very much like an owner and pet, but after Toru finds Toto, he keeps him in his home and plays with Toto, and once he once Toto gets too large, he moves into a secret hideout. We see Toru's fear of loss throughout both verbally from him denying the truth of Toto and in a dream sequence. fear of loss stems from the death of his mother. Toto fills that hole in his life. After Toto is taken by the Japanese government after an attack from an invading monster to be studied and researched, Toro is left ripped apart. He, but he realizes there's a way to save Toto and get him back up to even stronger than he was before. So by putting himself, his father, and his friends in danger, he's able to save an entire city alongside Toto. This film is very interesting because of its story elements and the idea of having humanity for the monsters, more particularly Toto. Throughout the film, Toto is not treated as a monster and more as a pet or a friend to Toru. Well, yes, this film does have a lot of similarities to the Steven Spielberg classic E.T. the Extraterrestrial. I believe this movie is original in its own aspects because you typically don't see this from a Japanese movie especially a monster movie. This film is one of my favorites of the entire kaiju genre. It's filled with heartfelt moments, great action, memorable characters, and monsters that almost feel real. What the f In 1965 by the Dai Film Company, Gamera was designed to market Direct competition. Direct. <laughs> Decided. To... I'm trying, okay. Decided. To... Decided to market. Market. <laughs> market. Okay. What? Eight. And you're also casting a shadow on the green screen. Like, and you just oh. knock it down. <laughs> it is concerned. What's the line? <laughs> the movie we are discussing today is Gamera the Brave. Directed in 2006. It was, it was released in 2006, not directed. Anyways, the movie we are discussing today is Gamera the Brave. It's ripped apart, basically. I shouldn't say basically. I shouldn't say basically. I shouldn't say basically. <laughs> I'm gonna get off the roof down.